Politics and religion. The conventional wisdom in American politics has long been that someone who is not religious has no chance of being elected president. But two major candidates, Donald Trump and Bernie Sanders, may be challenging that assumption. According to a Pew research poll, a lot of Republican voters who are religious and say they want to elect someone who shares their beliefs are supporting Trump, a candidate they don't see as very religious at all. In fact, Americans describe the GOP frontrunner as the least religious candidate, even more so than Hillary Clinton and Bernie Sanders. But this week, Trump did pick up the endorsement from one of America's most prominent evangelical leaders, Jerry Falwell Jr. And Bernie Sanders chance to make history as one of the few modern presidents to come out and say he isn't religious. Sanders saying in a recent interview that he believes in God, but it's, quote, not actively involved with religious or organized religion. So, Sandra, what do you think? Are we now entering, you know, a post-religious secular phase where that doesn't matter? Well, I, you know, we were provided a whole bunch of research for this topic that asked these researchers, is there any evidence that Republicans are becoming any less religious? There's no evidence of that. So I think this falls under the category of people can't quite figure out what's mm -hmm. going on this election cycle. They can't figure out why the needs of the American voter are so different and changing. It always, the answer seems to always be that people are angry. They're angry with government. They're fearful of terrorism. So, you know, the, their priorities have shifted and changed a bit. But I, I do think this just goes back to the, the head scratch. We can't quite figure out what's going on. Well, I think it's one reason why the polls in Iowa uh, are not necessarily accurate. One of the reasons it's so phenomenal that Trump is ahead is that given his background, I don't want to say New York values, but given his background, it's uh, unexpected that he appears to be doing as well as he is in Iowa. Now, maybe that re represents a fundamental change, but I'm not prepared to believe it. By contrast, on the Democratic side, uh, I, I think Bernie Sanders fits in a long That's tradition. Right. Uh, look at President Obama. I think, mm -hmm. honestly, mm -hmm. he's not a religious, mm -hmm. deeply religious man. After all, he sat in, sat in the Reverend Wright's church for years and apparently didn't listen to a thing he said. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, I, I'd say, Andrea, that I find interesting is that all these evangelicals are willing to vote for Trump. I mean, this is a guy who's been divorced twice. He gets Bible quotes wrong. I mean, even the polls say they don't see him as very religious. I think that says something about how tolerant um, the conservative movement yeah. are. And could you imagine a pro choice candidate, a very religious, highly religious um, Democrat candidate getting getting to where Bernie is Speaks right Speaks to the power of forgiveness, I suppose. Yeah, uh, they, are, they are very tolerant uh, this time around, and, and, and they don't seem to care that Trump has moderated different positions. Because I think what they see is between Sanders and Trump, they're authentic. If they're willing to have the guts to challenge the establishment and drop those political correct, political correctness, the politically correct talking points, then they're going to have the guts when they get in to hopefully, at least on Trump, to stand up for Christian beliefs. I mean, we've seen this administration target Christians with Obamacare. They've targeted them in n numerous different ways with the Hobby Lobby case. Trump pledges that he's going to take that on. And I think, Rachel, it's better. It's better not to be disingenuous. It's better not to stage photo ops of you going into a church. Or, yeah. And those two candidates don't do it. I mean, Bernie Sanders said, look, I'm not. He didn't pretend to be. You know, you've seen these other politicians pretend to be. They go to church. We've seen the Clintons in church. Christians are smart. Religious folks are but smart. To be they fair, can tell a phony. To be fair, Trump does carry around his Bible like a prop when he does go to well, some of these universities. Well, he says he believes in God, and so does Bernie Sanders. But, you know, think about how much power the evangelicals have. I mean, look at with Mitt Romney yeah. and, you know, reports of people not necessarily being comfortable with his Mormon religion. Mm -hmm. Evangelicals stayed home. Uh, a, a large percentage have yeah. been reported to have stayed home in the last election. That was very complicated for this party. So you talk about tolerance. Maybe it, it's, it's not exactly tolerance. Maybe it's a greater understanding of their worth, of their power as voters, and knowing that if we can pick somebody, this group, that isn't offensive in terms of what they value, maybe isn't specific. And that would be Donald Trump. He's not being specific. What can you tell me about his religion? Not much. You may have seen him with the Bible. He says he believes in God. He doesn't really drill down on that. But the talk of, is he a real Christian, like Jeb Bush tried to attack well, Trump, I think that's really disgusting. That's not fair. Because we've been told yeah. spirituality is a private matter. It's a personal and it is. thing. You're right. And it is. And that's all we hear is, is he Christian enough? Is he, does he believe in God? What does he believe? Oh, he misquoted a Bible verse. It's like, you know what? So say less, and that's say what less. he's done. Okay. And that's what he's done. And, you know, uh, to, and to get back to Mitt Romney for just a second, however unfair people may have been to look at him and to judge him for his religion, it was important to them.
But I think right. evangelicals so, learned their lesson. They did stay home for Romney, and they got a progressive, secular Obama instead. And so maybe this time they're going, we want a winner, even if he's not that religious. A winner who will fight for us. Yeah. Right. All right, save the date. The annual White Privilege Conference, well, it's coming up. And some colleges are reportedly paying for kids to attend, even some middle schoolers. So what's on that agenda and whether it's really a chance to learn something or just more PC indoctrination?